Alright guys, so this is my uh, second video covering the, the GT3571 KLVN. These are uh, variable nozzles, so instead of the sliding wall that you'd see on a whole set, kind of like this one here. So as you slow down or you want the exhaust brake, this wall comes over, protrudes across the turbine, which causes your uh, exhaust brake or EGR features. This one has a bunch of little nozzles in there that instead of protruding out, they rotate. Um, I think these are superior as far as performance, but of course if you're doing like hauling or anything that requires a lot more force, I think the whole sets are definitely going to be outperforming as far as the exhaust brake. Now for this video, I really want to cover how uh, these need to be calibrated just like the whole sets. You might not think to do, but to demonstrate why I can show right here. So this right here is your uh, basically adjustment knob so you can actually limit how far the actuator goes and this is really cool um, I guess for industrial applications especially for vehicles that don't need an exhaust brake you can limit the amount of travel so it can't get into the exhaust brake function um, the bad thing is so if you set these up as a turbo rebuilder um, if you don't have the ability to recalibrate the actuator you're going to slap this actuator on here and then it's going to think it can go past the stopper and it's going to keep on ramping up the amount of power that this is putting out, so it's going to increase the current. When it increases the current and it can't go anywhere, it's going to start transferring that energy to heat. And when it does it, this is your side effect. So it actually starts burning up the internals. Um, when that happens, it basically blows the motor. The cool thing is, these things are detachable. So it's not like the whole sets where you can't service them. You can actually go through, take all the ones that are bad, like this one here, you can't even rotate. The, uh, the arm by hand where this one I can so I can actually take the driver off save the driver for another motor that has a bad uh, another actuator that has a bad motor slap it on there and I'm good now so once you actually rebuild the turbo and you get where your uh, your minimum and maximum travel set where you want it I don't know if there's actually standard or if it's basically one-off applications you're just going to uh, calibrate it now it's calibrated. It knows where its max and left limit is. And once you do that, you can just start controlling it again. So it's really simple. Um, and then of course when you rebuild it again, you can just tell it to actuate or calibrate. And it checks max lets in the right limits. And just to show you, see if I can get a good video of that. See how close it is? It's right up against it. Now if I readjust that and do this again, and I want it to go to this position, it's not going to, if I tell it to go to the max travel in the command, like 100% travel, it's going to stop right here. But then if I recalibrate it again and I adjust that screw, it's going to go to the new adjustment. Um, for the guys that actually want to run this turbo, um, one big thing you got to realize that this isn't a standard connector, well, the flange, it's a T3 but it's rotated 90 degrees. So if you can imagine, this is the front of the motor, and this is the back of the motor, this flange sits like this, instead of like that that you'd find on a normal T3. So this is actually made by the Custom Fab Shop. You can go to their website, customfabshop.com. Um, basically what he made me is a inverted T3 to a T4. So it goes a little bit bigger, and this would've been really cool, but this is the first one, it's called a prototype. Um, we didn't, I didn't really, explained them too well but yeah as you can see it's a uh, basically contoured and we basically got the uh, got it flipped around but it's all right it's not that big a deal for a prototype so the idea would be that there wouldn't be any um, I don't know what you'd call it basically where it actually hit the wall it'll actually just be a nice transition from the T4 down into the T3 and then let's see if I can get in there for you guys see And that's the difference right here between a VNT and a VGT. So if you're at maximum travel with the exhaust brake, these fins, the nozzles, should basically be flat. Now it's still going to have exhaust flow, but your drive pressure is going to skyrocket. And basically that's what causes your exhaust brake. And that is wide open. And on this turbo, I believe that's a 0.84 AR ratio. Now, what I really like about these compared to the whole sets 
is the whole set, like I said, is that sliding wall. So even though it does change geometry, the geometry really doesn't change that much. It's more like an exhaust brake function, EGR range, operating range, and then you got like a blow-off range. For this, it's virtually, so let me get back to the... So that's completely closed as far as the command's concerned. Uh, so as you can see, from being completely closed all the way to all the way open, it's linear. There isn't no stepped gap. As you start actuating open, it's going to be linear from closed to open. Where the where the whole sets is going to be that kind of staged approach, just because you have that wall that's protruding so far. Um, so when you're looking for a performance application, I believe these will outperform a whole set. Um, yeah, um, pretty cool. So I'll have uh, my Banshee controllers will also be controlling this as well. Um, now these are a little bit more expensive to run because you're going to have to have the uh, T3 to T3 adapter or T3 to T4 adapter like I have. You're going to have to have an adapter for the uh, compressor flange, as you can see. So basically you have to have an adapter here to uh, like a 2 inch or 2 and a half inch. And then look at the back, you got a really weird triangle exhaust flange again so right now we only have this from the custom fab shop but I'm working with them to uh, create the back and here so I'll actually have a three inch v-band and two or two and a half inch v-band for the compressor outlet um, but yeah so just keep that in mind for the turbo rebuilders that you have to calibrate the actuators uh, feel free to check out my Facebook page send me an email if you guys have any questions thanks